This week, three sides of the coin. It's all about kiss fails this week. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest failures kiss has had in their career that we have seen? And this one you get to play along with because you can let us know what failures we missed. This is three sides of the coin talking all things. Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Hey, Three Sides of the Coin. We got the original two. The guys that started this whole thing over 10 years ago. You got Mike and you got Tommy. Lisa plans on joining us at some point soon she was running a little late and mark is either on a beach in florida or has got his head buried in a bucket of crabs or both at the same time could very well be any of those so mark's not joining us as much as we'd love to watch him eat crab i think that would be as enjoyable as watching izzy eat a steak yeah but you know what? There's something perversely interesting about watching Izzy eat a steak. Well, that's just it's because Izzy himself is just perverse. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I'm not really sure what it is. But yeah, there's just something perverse about it. I think part of it is with Izzy, you just don't know at any given moment what could happen. He doesn't know. Mm-mm. I can say, though, he is drove or driven that bit with the girl into the ground. In, in, in the, like, yeah, I think I think I think Izzy needs a new fake girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. find a new stand up somewhere else, Izzy. This this one this 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 one isn't giving you the time of day anymore. But then today when we're recording it is Valentine's Day. So it's possible to get one of those latex girlfriends. <laughs> Today's girlfriend for Izzy is this. Exactly. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, all right. No guests today because, again, Mark, we knew, was traveling. And actually, no guests next week because I will be out. I'm going to be down in Disneyland doing the family stuff in Disneyland for a week. Joy, joy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know what you'll you miss guys- the week after because you're going to have to be recovering from donating a kidney either donating a kidney or become coming back with the disney crud that's got me sicker than a dog or both but at least you're not on a you're not on a ship that's that like, yeah at, at least yeah. i'm not on a cruise ship right i can always jump in our rental car and leave you always have that option which is good and and disneyland won't be five thousand kiss fans no um so no guests today but i think we've got an interesting topic but before we get into that do you uh have any comments you want to yeah share Tommy? Uh, joey middleton I haven't seen joey in forever so it's so nice to see him engage he said eric singer has the most amount of time in the band other than gene and paul which is true and a very good point um high number it's interesting there is that Venice Beach interview with Peter from December 1988, where he is talking about the potential of a full original lineup reunion with makeup. The reunion was obviously something that was talked about even when Kiss were in their successful late 80s incarnation. Oh, I, I, I agree. And I think the point I made in, in last week's episode was it's been talked about, but talking, just saying, oh, hey, an inter- uh, a reunion would be cool, I'd, I'd be into it, is not the same as lawyers and booking agents and managers actually looking at numbers and trying to make it happen. Well, yeah, and then also, too, let's face it, the powers that be are pushing the narrative as well. So yeah. Ace and Peter were talking about a reunion a hell of a lot longer than Gene and Paul were. Yeah, I mean, you know, during the 80s, Ace and Peter would be all for having a reunion. I mean, let's be honest, for the most part, their careers weren't spectacular 
during the 80s. Gene and Paul had a, an active band that was touring and selling millions of albums during the 80s. So they weren't desperate for it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I think everybody at some point is always like, oh, yeah, a reunion could be possible. I mean, for any band out there, as long as the original guys are still alive, somebody's going to be talking about a reunion. But that just is not the same as, you know, in 88 or 89, did Gene and Paul actually sit down, talk to managers, lawyers, booking agents, and go, okay, what kind of offers can we get? What kind of money can we get? What's out there? That's that's a whole, that's taking it to a whole different level than a passing comment in an interview saying, yeah, I'd be all for it. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, it was a good point. So yeah, those are the ones I wanted to read today. And that was on what are the differences between interviewing Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, episode number, God, what number is this? I don't see it. Five, 14, I think. Um, number 420, four, I don't know. 514, I think. I okay. think so. Well, there you go. So just go to our, our go to the YouTube channel. You can look up Michael Brandbold Marketing. You can look up three sides of the coin. You'll find it. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. In in any any kiss news that's out there right now. Um they haven't announced any more shows yet. I'm, I'm hoping that'll what... be happening soon. Mark said it was yeah. supposed to be already by now. Yeah, I'm wondering what what got in the way of of that sort of an announcement of the remaining shows and where the last show is going to be and maybe and it's all, logistics all that yeah. Yeah. who knows um I'm trying to think is there anything else no I, I I'm I'm not aware of anything that's well one thing is uh, Peter and Ace showing up at. Oh, at the Motley Crue Motley concert. Crew show. Everyone's all freaking out about that. I'm like, they're both friends with John Five. Yeah. How is that? They're friend- well, they're friends with John Five. They're friends with each other, and they both live in the area. So uh, don't read into it. <laughs> it doesn't mean a doesn't mean a kiss reunion is happening. No, it's probably more like, oh hey, Pete. That's really yeah. probably how it went down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so today I was inspired by, I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos about tech, you know, like the greatest cell phone failures in the last 20 years, the greatest tech failures, the nine greatest failures in this. Um, well, Which I before always... you start, though, speaking of success, congratulations to you on the meta thing. Oh, thank That's you. That's really cool. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that? Um, Facebook slash meta, the parent company of Facebook, did a profile on me and my business and put together a nice little one page interview recap of me and what I've done and stuff like that. I've shared it on, on my Facebook and my Twitter and stuff like that. And you can, you can go there if you want to see it, but it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool to get that. A win for you is a win for all of us. Yep. You know, anyways, I didn't mean to derail you. Oh, that's okay. So, so, you know, I was watching these fail, these videos on the greatest failure product failures, you know, products that were supposed to be, big that were supposed to be groundbreaking and died right away got canceled failed you know never delivered on their promises whatever it was and i was like hmm kiss has got their share of failures Mm -hmm. what would we think are some of the greatest failures Mm -hmm. in history and It could be anything. It could be an album. It could be a single. It could be a video. It could be a tour. It could be a band member. It could be, you name it. It could be an interview. It could be an appearance. It could be a a product that they released. Um, But what 
do we think are some of the greatest failures in history? And that will be the first homework question is whether you agree or disagree with what we talk about today and what you think the failures are. And, and, and what yours point. are. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and we don't need to go in any sort of timeline here. Um, okay. We can jump all over the place. I will start okay. and say that probably one of the first and gr- still greatest failures, in my opinion, the four solo albums. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about them musically. I mean, I think we've all talked about over the years what we think of them musically. I just think as those four solo albums were promoted and set up, they were set up to be the biggest thing ever, not just in the world of Kiss, but in the music world. Four guys in a band each doing a solo album, each releasing it simultaneously. Nobody had ever done that before. And, you know, they made the big deal. Oh, we're going to ship a million of each of them. Four million albums in the first day are going to be sold. And I think the failure is it never came close to living up to any of the hype Mm -hmm. that, that was made. Now, granted, as a as a as a young kid back in '78 when those came out, I thought they were the coolest thing under the sun. Of course, of course. it was like four new Kiss records, and there were posters in them and merch forms. And sure, I was all into the excitement of it. But as as a product that lived up to what they were hyped to be, I think they were a huge failure. Right. Well, and uh, Neil Bogart couldn't do anything but oversell everything. And it's right. funny that you mentioned this one first because I was uh, scrolling through Facebook, YouTube, I don't know, whatever, over the weekend one evening, and it came across a uh, video about the pressing of the solo albums. Yeah, I saw that. And e- even the hype surrounding that e- particular e- piece. Even the hype in that video piece was so, they were well, they were like, Four million in the first day, and they're already preparing another four million for two yep. weeks from now. And I'm just like, and God knows how many more. Shit, nobody <laughs> was preparing another four million. <laughs> they were preparing to find a dump that they could bury four bury million in. vinyl albums in. Yeah, they should. It's like, who was it that said Kiss should have a landfill? You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so I agree. When you're a kid, it was like the coolest thing ever especially when you didn't have the money to buy all of them. You had to pick one at a time. And so, of course, you pick your favorites first and you love them so much. You're like, oh, and it just can keep getting better, better, better. And they just, they overshot it. I mean, it could have been a really cool, successful thing. And I bet you they could have sold, and I think they did, about a half a million copies each, which would have been 2 million total sales of record which is probably at the time what they would have sold had they done like a double album. Yeah. Yep. You know. So what, what's, what's the first failure for you? Peter Chris's solo career. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed by that. And again, some of it's the powers that be, and I'm not going to go into who did what or any of that sort of thing. I, I thought that, that um that first solo album got buried and i thought it was there's some good songs on it, if it was poorly produced and i'm not talking about the 78 i'm talking about out of control and i mean they barely shipped anything now granted kiss was on the slide by that point so it's not like um you know unmasked was selling a ton of copies but i, I always thought that he had a good voice i, I liked his music and I was at the club the other day and on my rotation came the song Tears, which is off of this, the, his next solo record. Right. You guys probably all know that. I love that song. That should have been a top 10 hit, I think, in my opinion. I thought it was really well written. 
And I just thought, God, if he would have just put a string of songs together like that, or similar to that, he probably could have had a decent solo career, you know, and I'm not going to say why he did or didn't and, and what his role in all this was, but to me, that was a failure that shouldn't have been. Yeah. You know, I, I almost look at Peter's solo career as it never, it never existed to begin with. Well, there's true. He, never, that, he, 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 he tried. He, 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 he had, a, he had two albums and, you know, I almost feel like, you know, were, were those albums just gimmies? Like, okay, the label's like, yeah, here, yeah, we'll, we'll do a solo album for you just because we've worked with you for a decade here. And, mm -hmm. But, I mean, he never, never made an effort to go out and tour. Never. No. I mean, at least during the 80s, whether you liked Ace's albums or not, he toured his butt off. Mm -hmm. He toured his butt off. I mean, Ace had a touring band. He was out there. He was playing. Peter never, ever toured as Peter Chris during the 80s. No, which is odd to me. To me, that was a failure because it was a lost opportunity, I guess. Yeah. And I like the songs. So there you go. Yeah. Um, you know, I think an, uh, another obvious failure to me is music from the elder. Mm -hmm. And again, not getting into whether the album is good or bad, but as a product, this was, you know, this was hyped and had everything going. It said Bob Ezrin, who had just come off of Pink Floyd, The Wall, who was a huge success be behind Destroyer and Beth. Um, you know, you had, you had, um, you, the band was even talking about, oh yeah, it's going to be a rock album and it's going to be great and blah, blah, blah. And, and then all of a sudden it was the, all right, this product is going to be designed to prove to the critics how good we are as songwriters and musicians. And it's like, product failure you you failed in delivering all of that you failed in delivering a, a, an incredible rock album i mean there were some great songs on there some good rock songs yeah. but it didn't live up to that hype it obviously it didn't live up to bob ezrin's hype no. and I, and of course we all know you know bob was not in the best of of shape at that point in time and i mean there's a lot of drugs going on and stuff like that and egos and let's turn this into a concept album and you know as product as product features go everything about the elder was a failure but when you also agree to that one of the huge miscalculations that they they made was that at least from my perspective pink floyd is fm darlings you know, just with literally Dark Side of the Moon alone. And then they were handpicking two or three songs off of each record from Wish You Were Here to Animals that were played in, in pretty heavy rotation on the FM rock stations. Even if Kiss would have put out the wall, I think the radio stations would have ignored it. Oh, of, co of course. I mean, I think so that was... So they were in a position to do it. They, 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 you know, again, this is where timeline is important. You know, back when 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 the elder was being recorded, um, Kiss had really hit that wall of the makeup. The makeup was what the general public saw. It's what the music industry saw. You know, we we know from day one in Kiss's career, they've always battled the, oh, it's not the music. It's just the makeup. It's just the show. It's just the pyro. It's, you know, it's spitting blood on stage. They can't play. They can't write. And again, we know that's all bullshit because if you actually listen to the songs, you will realize there's a lot of great music in there. Mm -hmm. And 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 again, you don't have a 50-year career if you have nothing but crappy songs for 50 years. You don't sell 100 million albums. Um because you have pyro on stage. Mm -hmm. 
you have a hundred million albums because you have great music. But I think Kiss at the time of the elder really wanted to try and get out of the, it's the makeup stereotype. That's why they wanted to go prove the critics wrong, that we could write a great album, great songs, great musicianship, everything. And that would prove the critics wrong that we are a great band. Didn't matter. I mean, the first thing the, the, the critics do is they go, you're still kiss. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. You know? So even the critics said they did win over it was at the cost of losing their fans. Losing a significant number of their fans at that point in time. Yeah. I putting mean, it was. Record, well, putting out that record at that time would be like making a, a war movie and removing all the killing out of it. You know? Yeah. All the death has to leave. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna show that the, the troops, you know, storming Normandy Beach, but we don't want to see anyone get shot. Right. That's kind of what it was. It took all of the substance out of what that was. All the rock, everything was gone, and it turned into this. Even the promo, and I've mentioned this before. Even the promos that I heard on the radio for the record touted the weakest songs on the record, not the stuff that was actually rock and that just made it worse and that just gave all the critics even more well actually not critics but people in my school at least even more freaking fuel to uh, give us a hard time yeah yeah so you know i think as as a product goes the elder was a a significant failure and not delivering on what was promised. Yeah, I agree. Well, my next one, and this is more of a personal, not that the other ones are, but the Crazy Nights Tour, I felt was an abject failure because it was the only tour that I can remember of all the times that I've seen them where it wasn't bombastic because Asylum was, then Crazy Nights wasn't, but then Hot in the Shade was. It almost seemed like they stripped it down to the point where there was just nothing there. And they played shorter shorter sets as well. Yeah, they, 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 they played for like 75 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was a tour. I've said this many times. I felt like they just were phoning it in. They just, something about that tour they just didn't care about anymore. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, and, and I don't know if we've ever actually really heard from Gene and Paul or anybody who was in the band or around the band, what was going on mentally, why. I mean, it was clear, there was clearly a lack of energy emotion concern it was like get in get this show done and get out of here we don't give a crap was that being driven by the failure of crazy nights was it being driven by the the tensions between gene and paul i i i don't know i'd love to i'd love to really have somebody reveal pull it pull back the curtain and reveal what was going on during the crazy nights era truthfully because i agree with you it was as a tour goes it's always right up there as my least favorite tour the album i love i love i love the album the absolute the tour was an absolute snore fest and an absolute snore and it's not in from my point of view this is not an indictment on the record i'm purely speaking tour wise i just think they i felt like they just didn't care they were just literally at that point where we're done. That's almost why Hot in the Shade was so incredible. Because I remember seeing the Crazy Nights tour went a couple times and it didn't get any better. And walking away really disappointed and going, this is just not good anymore. This direction's bad. Then they come out with Hot in the Shade. I'm like, okay, well, the songs are are good and the production's not very good, but there's a few songs on there that I really like. So I was like, okay, I'm enthused by this. And then because this is before the internet, 
we go, the show starts, and they open up with I Stole Your Love. I'll never forget looking at my buddy going, and then it was one after the other. Yep. And I'm like, that's at that point in time in 1989, 1990, that's what people like myself that I knew that were fans desperately wanted. And that goes back to your point earlier that the music is there because they were playing all of these older songs that everybody loved. And it turned out to be one of the best tours ever just because of the music it had nothing to do with all the weird shit that they had going on stage and the Sphinx and all that kind of thing, whatever. But man, they were so good as a band and they musically and the song selection was great. It just almost made crazy nights tour look even shittier because of it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely did. Definitely did. Um, all right. Let me think here. What's another failure. There's obvious album failures. I don't want to jump into another one right away. Okay. Well, do you want me to give me another? Um, yeah. Why don't you give me another one while I'm thinking here? The fan of the park. And it was a disaster. You know, as far as I'm concerned now, when I was a kid, I'm like, Oh, this is cool. But even I was sitting there going, this is kind of dorky, but I still was into it because, hey, it's Kiss. Why wouldn't you? They're on national TV on a weeknight or weekend, whatever, and this is great. But it, you know, in hindsight, not that, that because like even if you look at Hard Day's Night or Help, those have weathered better, you know, than Fan of the Park. And it just, I don't know. It, it, it would have been cooler if they would have done something different, even if it was just a live concert documentary, you know? So to me, I don't, I, I don't think Phantom was a great failure the way I'm looking at other things here. It, it, it clearly didn't live up to, Oh, it's star Wars meets hard days night. Um, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that was asinine to even, you know, propose that. It's like, but as, as the movie goes, I had a fucking blast watching it. I have a blast watching it anytime afterwards. You know, I got, did it hurt them? I'm not sure it hurt them. No, I mean, I, but you can have a failure and it doesn't necessarily hurt the band. I just, I felt, you know, I think. I respect what you're saying, and I know Mark would agree that oh yeah, it was a complete and total failure for him. I just it it I I never saw it and, and felt it as a failure. Right. Well, and probably it, because it did. Well, what it did is it was two sided. On one side, I think you got even more younger fans involved that fueled the Dynasty tour because you could see by the time they came for Dynasty, the crowd had gotten considerably younger, and then the remaining kiss fans from 74 75 76 saw this and they're like okay between this and the dolls and the garbage can and all this other stuff we're gone so it kind of was like a i don't know a reset in a way that period and then you throw the solo albums in too and it's like i will here's one that I'm sure is going to be worth some discussion amongst the listeners. I will say it was a failure to put Eric and Vinny in new characters. I don't think that in the end that didn't sustain or help Kiss's career in the long run. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Vin, Vinny's makeup was never on an album cover. And it was only seen on one tour that was a bomb failure of a tour. Yeah. Um, Eric's makeup was seen on one album cover. Two. It was on Killers. Yep. Although that was an import at the time yep. and creatures, creatures. <clears throat> and as tours go, yes, he was in Australia, but I, Australia was a whole different 
beast. They could have put any. They could have put anybody in any makeup in Australia, and it would have been huge at that point in time. I think. Right, but couldn't you also argue though that um, replacing one member with Eric Carr and putting him in the Fox makeup is one thing, but then to lose Ace and have to do it a second time now half of your band is different. Yeah, was a was much more of the negative than if it, they- it, it, it was it was the second time it was Vinny that really made you look back. It's like okay, what the fuck is going on here? Are we just throwing people into to yeah. make up? And, you know, at the time, you know, we it, we were reading that, oh, yeah, you know, Paul Stanley created the makeup and came up with the character for him. It's like, well, that's not even what Kiss was about back then. You know, the characters were supposed to be an extension of the person. The person made it up. And now all of a sudden, now you just got, one guy in the band saying, Oh, you're going to be this. It's right. like, that's not what kiss was all about back then. True. I think, I think looking back, um, it would have been as successful or you could argue it could have made it more successful if they put them in the original makeup. Now, obviously they couldn't have back then because Gene and Paul didn't have the rights to ace and peter's makeup to use that but i i almost wonder did they even have a consideration of well do we do that and see how we can get the rights to use the makeup to do that or were they just like nope we're coming up with new characters because yeah i felt like looking back that was a failure that 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 really didn't do anything as a, as a diehard KISS fan, was I excited? Yes, but it really did very little to help boost the band's career at that time. Nothing was going to help them except taking the makeup off completely. And to your point, that's probably what should have happened when Ace left. They just, all they did was they stopped it by one record. Well, yeah, I mean, in interviews... Paul wanted the makeup off for Creatures of the Night. Yeah. Gene wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. So they kept it on. And you can almost tell by Paul's costume for Creatures of the Night. That was basically just ev- everyday stage clothes, other yeah. than he was wearing platform boots. Yeah. But I mean, he was wearing a cutoff t shirt. He was wearing, yeah. you know, spandex pants. He was wearing metal belts. He had no costume like he used to have in the seventies. So you could see that for creatures, Paul was all ready to dump that makeup. Yeah. And it was probably just as a compromise to Gene that will keep it for one more album. And then it had to come off. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I would agree that, that that's a failure. And people will argue now whether they should have, and I don't think they would have, even if they would have had the rights, I don't think that hindsight's 2020. And I don't know if they could have thought about that back then. Yeah. But, I don't, I don't know. know if they even, even gave that a thought as an option. It would be interesting to find out if that was something that was discussed. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't, and this has nothing to do with, liking or not liking Eric or Vinny. This is just looking at as a whole, did creating new makeup help Kiss succeed further? Was it a successful venture? And I would, I would say, no, it wasn't successful at all. I mean, unmasked was not successful. Elder was not successful. Creatures of the Night was not successful. It did nothing. Those new characters didn't do anything to help the band return to their glory. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think that, that it's just one of many mis- missteps that just got amplified because of all the other turmoil that was going on around them. 
you know, and, and also too, I think they, they thought back in the day, because again, think about what it was like in 1980 versus what it is even over the last five years or so. Everybody knows everything about everybody now, as far as anyone that is in the limelight or in public consciousness, you know, so they thought, well, maybe we can hide certain things a little bit better, you know, back in the day than we can now. And so maybe some of that played into it. There, there's just so many things that not only could we discuss why, but we have to look at the timeline and what was literally going on, not only in the music industry, but within the band at that moment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All you right. got another one? Yeah, I do. Mark St. John. Yeah. Epic failure. Cause he ended up on a record. And he ended up on the back cover of Animal Eyes. Now, granted, it's not their fault that he ended up with his problems with his hand. But I would go one step further that he was an epic failure in the fact that they were, again, trying to put somebody in the band that may or may not have fit properly with his guitar playing and what he did. Because Kiss wasn't a shred band. Yeah. What some of these others were. And, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's beyond the makeup piece of it. But when they took the makeup off and they went into the non makeup era, the sound of the band shifted as the members changed. And I can't help but wonder what would have happened in the non makeup era if they would have, once Vinny left, chosen someone different but then again it led to bruce which worked out because bruce was a stable really great musician that was good for the band i mean i don't know there's just yeah i mean i i will i will expand on what you just said not that the failure was mark st john the failure was kiss gene and paul wanting to replace ace with a shredder Yep. Which is what got Vinny in there, which got Vinny replaced by Mark St. John. Then they realized that wasn't who we want. And now we got Bruce Kulick. Yep. What if Ace Fraley had been replaced by Bruce Kulick? Right. Because to me, that failure was you're 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 not a shredder band. You're never going to be seen as a shredder band. You're never going to be in the league of Randy Rhodes or Eddie Van Halen. Right. So don't um, try. You can still make great music. Don't, don't, don't try. Um, and, you know, just be, get the guitarist like Bruce Kulick, who was influenced by guitarists you guys were influenced by, rather than getting somebody who was influenced by Randy Rhodes. Very well or said. Randy Van Halen. Mm -hmm. um, and realizing, no, that's not who we were because, you know, we, we all know this, but it, I just listened to the um, Creatures of the Night track that comes off the next off the soundboard from the Animalized tour that features Mark St. John. Holy crap, do they play fast. Yeah. Wow. And it's just like, yeah, you know what? All through the 80s, they were playing fast on everything, even, even when Bruce was was the lead yeah. guitarist thing things were considerably faster than 70s kiss was and, and, those, and you know and those of you that are listening that are musicians you know how much tempo can change the way the song is delivered yeah yeah it just was like oh my god i'm listening to a bull you know i'm listening to creatures of the night and it sounds like it's a blender mm -hmm. yeah it's like that's not what this is about Watch yeah. you know so to me I don't know if the failure is Mark St. John specifically, but I do no, think it, and it, was on, it was on it was on it was on my list of the failure of the early 80s guitarist turnover because I remember as a fan just like holy fuck, when are they gonna settle down on a guitar player? Ace is out, Vinny's in, Vinny's out, Mark St. John's in, Mark St. John's out temporarily and bruce just filling in on the tour now he's permanent member it's just like oh my god would you shut this revolving door of guitarists in your band kiss mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. failure 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 you know 
again, what would Kiss have been like when Ace was, re- if Ace had been replaced by Bruce Kulick? Right. Right. I mean, it wouldn't have changed the, it wouldn't have changed um, Creatures of the Night because Ace wasn't on there. Now, granted, Vinny played on some of them, but Vinny was just one of like, what, seven guitarists on Creatures of the Night? And, oh, yeah. And, and before that... anybody says anything, yes, Vinny contributed some great songwriting to Creatures and Lick It Up. And maybe... Vinny would have continued as just a, a songwriter with Kiss while somebody else was the lead guitarist. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It, it's not taking away from Vinny's ability to write the songs. The songs were still there, but a different guitar player could have made all the difference in the world. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I will. I think another failure for me was the incredible long period of time over multiple tours that Kiss continued to use the farewell tour stage. Ooh. To me, that was... So basically from Farewell Tour up to Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom was a completely new stage. So from the Farewell Tour up to Sonic Boom, they used the same stage. Sure, they put video screens on the on the amps and they added video, but it was still the same tiered amps, same yeah. every everything was the same. And I can speak for myself and say that was what was one of the big reasons in 2007, 2008 that I pulled the plug and said, I can't go see these guys anymore. It's like, I remember you saying that you're, you're, you're not, you're not creative. I remember as a kiss fan growing up year after year after year, Gene and Paul would always say, we don't compete with any of the other bands out there. We compete with ourselves. We compete with what we did on our last tour. We've got to do better than what we did on our last tour. That's who we compete with. Yeah. And he forgets that people hold him to shit when he says it. Yeah. Well, and, and listen, the farewell tour stage was fresh and exciting for the farewell tour. I remember yeah. when I first saw that in, in Phoenix, I'm like, oh, this looks fucking cool. Yeah. But then they used it every fucking tour after that, all the way up to Sonic Boom. And it was just like, you guys are lazy. You are absolute lazy. You're not competing with yourselves anymore. You're just taking the cheap way out. Yeah. Hey, we don't have to rebuild it. We don't have to build a new stage. Let's save some money. We'll use the stage we've used for the last three years. And I think that was a huge failure. I, that's a real good one. And I agree with that. I would have never thought of that. Um, well, then let's take it one step further to finish this piece. because I had something else I wanted to mention. The Monster Tour Rig, too. You know, the idea behind the spider was really cool. But I felt like they rushed it to production put it out on the road. It didn't work the way they had said it would or envisioned that it would. And then they just got rid of it. Yeah. And I felt like that had, there were some cool elements to that, that they didn't. And I can't speak about hydraulics and, and, and any of that, even if the thing just moved up and down more, which surely you'd think would, they could do with cables, you know, they, they, I thought the concept was cool and they didn't take it to its likely or most relevant conclusion. They just kind of scrapped it. Yeah. You know what? And, and I will expand on that by saying the destroyer tour was the same way. So too short. Yeah. The, the failures were kiss, not I've always felt kiss never built themed stages and themed stage shows. Right. And by a theme, what do I mean? Well, the creatures of the night, it was a tank. That was a theme. 
yeah. Destroyer was a theme. It had it had visuals that matched the personas of Kiss. Um, love Gun's not a theme stage. It's, it's cool, but it wasn't a theme. It wasn't the Love Gun theme. Right. Dynasty wasn't a dynasty theme. Um, you know, the 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 monster, the 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 spider was a theme. I thought that was a pretty cool yeah. attempt. I, I just wish they would have stuck with it a little bit longer and tried to work out some of the kinks, but it almost felt like it was so rushed that it just, I don't know. I don't know what happened to yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I wish, I wish they would have given the destroyer stage a chance. I agree. Beyond the few shows that they did with it and then scrapped it. It was like, visually it's like yeah you've got these little worlds for each character and it matches their character and their theme and it's cool you know that's that's what kiss is all about it's it's these characters it's these themes and they never really they never really did that in concert in my opinion you know again destroyer they did a theme creatures was a theme um, lick it up was a theme, but you know, I'll hear, you know, another I'll, I'll, thing too. I, I, yeah. there, there's another failure right there. Reusing everything from creatures of the night on lick it up the exact same sure. stage. Yeah. Lame. The tour yeah. book, just mm-hmm. putting the, that graphic over the tank that now it covers up the 10th anniversary tour. And, you know, it's yeah. like, I, I, I get it. They realize that few people saw creatures of the night so the look it up was new to them i totally get it oh yeah but i as a fan i was just like the fuck it's not even a year later and i'm at the look it up tour and it's the exact same thing that i just saw you come through town with even if they would have added a few elements and changed it a little bit that's why uh, i thought that and i I also think that that because the uh Animalized stage was at least a theme, somewhat of a theme stage because they had the album cover across the floor. Yeah, you the know, album I mean, cover across the floor. They yeah, they had yeah. they had the band members coming up behind and they had the stepping ramp. down and they and they and they had that um that the thing that lifted them up into the the lighting rig and yeah. then it dropped down and they ran down. The animalized stage was very cool. You know, right. I, I so, think I think asy- asylum. I wasn't a big fan of the asylum stage, but it was completely different. They completely, was, yeah, it was. They a, completely it was changed it from the tour before. And I Thumbs would also argue, and I would also argue that there was a little bit of theme there too, because they did look at how colorful the clothes were, look at how yep. colorful the album color cover was. They went very, very colorful with that huge logo. Again, it was different, you know. Yep. Whereas. Uh, Crazy Nights almost felt like the Dynasty stage with a new drum kit in the middle of it. Yeah, you know, and and Hot in the Shade and and Revenge had themed stages. Yes. Um, I'm not sure Hot in the Stage Hot in the Shade stage matched a theme for the album, but it was well, still a very was awful. It was an off. It was an awful album cover. It was an awful album, in my opinion, but it was. It was refreshing to see more than just stage elements. It's like, oh, there is a, a, a big sphinx head and the, the band comes out of the mouth and it collapses and a logo comes up. Now, granted, the logo that came up sucked, but the whole point was it worked. And Revenge had the same thing. It had, you know, a Statue of Liberty that was flipping people off. It was like they were putting together a state stages that had themes. They not didn't necessarily m- match the theme of the band members because they weren't in makeup anymore. Yeah. Although revenge kind of had, could, could go along with that, that album cover, but yeah, I think, I think for as much love as kiss gets for their tours, they've dropped the ball on a lot of them. Mm-hmm. But then also, and then we're nitpicking because that's what we do as fans. And and so lots of times it's like, it felt like it was 90% there, but it was missing a few elements. That's why, at least for me personally, 
with the farewell tour, it was a complete or end of the road tour, a completely new look with the pods and the whole nine yards and the yeah. Sammy the serpent and all these great aspects and those huge black cats are really cool. So they've done some great things there. I would love to see on these last 50 shows a change in element. You don't have to get rid of the pods and give all that money invested, but give us some more history there, whatever that might be. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what the what our listeners are going to say about all of this. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll throw out, you know, another to me big failure was was Carnival of Souls. Okay. I mean, that was just that was just an absolute. Oh, Lisa's here. Just as we're about to finish up, let's let her join, and she can contribute. Talk about the Harry. Hello, Mrs. Harry. Hello, sorry. It's like we're on OnlyFans. <laughs> My God. Let me tell you something. When you have, it's like, Mom, can you go get this for me? Like now? Then I sent traffic. I'm sorry. It was such a pain. Oops, sorry. No, 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 no. Don't oh, no, be no. sorry about that. <laughs> don't be sorry. <laughs> new computer. Don't you look at this new computer? Look, like camera's a little bit better, right? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. In you're all gonna, fairness, you're gonna, so. You're, you're going to make so much on OnlyFans now. So low and, <laughs> that anything you do is going to be great. I'll tell you, I was, this came on, it was supposed to come on Friday, then it came on Saturday, and I was like, ooh, I can, I load my meetings so fast. Like the computer Good. on quick, I click the meeting link, and it's like, poof, none of this like circle in and connect in and all those other bullshit. It's like, Wah! back in the 20, but back in the high technology age now. So do you want to join our discussion that we're just about wrapping up? Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, first of all. Happy, Happy Valentine's Day. Day. Okay. So what did I miss? Tell me everything. Um, so 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 we're talking about failures. Kiss's biggest failures. Whether it's albums, tours, band members, appearances, songs, videos. You name it. Things that were failures, and 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 we've we've already mentioned things like the solo albums, um, the uh, the the rotating guitars of replacing Ace Frehley with Vinnie Vincent, and then Mark St. John, and then realizing you're not a shredder band, and getting somebody like Bruce Kulick who fits in much better. We should have just it, gotten you Bruce know, after Ace left. Fan, to, Tommy brought up you know Phantom of the phantom of the park is a yeah. failure um you know so it's it's things that you know and now we were talking about stages like how they they didn't give stages like the spider stage or the destroyer stage a chance to really succeed they didn't they didn't they didn't really grab on to themed stages that fit the band, the personalities, the characters. They just tried the destroyer stage and was gone. They tried the monster stage with the spider and it was gone. Yeah, you but know, it, the reason they didn't last as well is when you're looking at that destroyer stage, technology wasn't what it is today. Do you think if they could recreate that destroyer stage now and use well, some of the special effects yeah, that they wanted to use? You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I think that's that's what we're what we're getting at is like they fail they failed in those cases to give those cool stages a chance to work but then moving forward they 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 never really de dive deeply into creating great character driven themed stages creatures was a theme it was just a big tank but it was a theme um hot in the shade and revenge were themed stages they didn't necessarily match characters of the band members at the time but they were they were different than you know what the what i brought up was a failure was using the freaking farewell tour stage for years 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 and years grinding that stage into the ground of being so fucking boring and not creating something new 
You know, I, I always said that KISS always said they only compete with themselves. They only compete with what they did on the last album, on the last tour. They don't worry about what other bands are doing. And from the farewell tour to Sonic Boom, they weren't competing with themselves. They were just using the same goddamn stage, saving money. Of course, there's financial reasons for it. But as a fan, it's like, okay, how many tours do I have to see the same goddamn, yeah, you know, st- racked fake amps that aren't used that nobody runs up and stands in front of them anyway? Get to something new here. What was the... The tour was an asylum with just the giant Kiss logo. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, I, I thought I love the Giants Kiss logo, but I don't like think it like added anything to the. You know what I mean? Like, well, it, it's, it Tom, it's Tom, it, Tommy. Tommy brought up that the Asylum album was all about bright colors, the costumes, yeah. the album cover. So the stage was very bright, lots of colors. And, and, you know, that giant Kiss logo was filled with lights of various colors. So it, it, I w- would, it, would I call it a pure theme? No, but it was a completely different stage than the Animalized Tour, which was previous. And the Crazy Nights Tour, which followed... And Crazy Nights Tour, by the way, we both agreed was was another failure because it was a snorefest tour of the band not caring. They just phoned it in on that that tour. Yeah, but, it, but I, think, I think Creatures was kind of where, I mean, not Creatures, Crazy Nights is like where Bruce kind of found himself. You know, because if you go back and look at the Asylum Tour, I think he just didn't know what to do yet. And then the Crazy Nights Tour, I felt that he was a little bit more like Bruce, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think the crazy nights album and tour, he, he was finally getting comfortable with the band and who he was and where he could be on stage and what he could do without getting in trouble, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think the crazy nights album, he was the first album where he really was like, okay, Bruce Kulik's the lead guitarist here. It's really shining on his own. Yeah. But that didn't take away from the tour being boring. Boring. So right before you joined, Michael brought up Carnival of Souls. And that's what we were discussing when you joined. Carnival of Souls as an album was just a huge, huge failure. I mean, there, I mean, it's like it's like it 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 did nothing. It you know, if you remove that from the band's career, nothing changes their career. It doesn't change their career one bit. If Carnival of Souls never existed, the only thing I liked about Carnival of Souls was that, you know, that the time I, I felt that that was the album that Bruce had his solo, um, his solo song on. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and and I liked that solo song. I thought it was great. I just wish that it wasn't per se on that album because it was so overshadowed and it was like it like it was like thrown out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had I had a, the the album on cassette tape, like an old bootleg, way before it even came out. Oh yeah, it was I mean, very well circulated. Like, way way, I remember in the summertime when I got it. It was summertime, um, but I I felt that it was like they had it. Obviously, they had to throw it out because I think they owed that to the record company, right? They had to get that one more album out there. I don't know. Yeah, I could 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 be, but I think they had the obligation tend to get that out but it was such it was it was such bad timing um you know not heavily promoted they they, i feel like they just fulfilled an obligation and yeah and 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 on top of it at least you know i'm only speaking for myself because i know there's a lot of people who love it musically it it wasn't wasn't even a kiss album yeah you know it was it was it was alice in chains Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that's what they want. That's what they they literally were trying to record an album for Alice in Chains, and it's like it's not a Kiss album. So who give you know who? I don't give a shit. Oh. I just could care less about any of that. Are they great, deep, meaningful lyrics? Yes. Yeah. I'm not taken away from that. I'm not taken away from Bruce's ability to to make that album his. I'm just saying. 
for a kiss, that was a failure. That was a complete and total failure of a project. It did, it did nothing. They couldn't tour in support of it. Nobody gives a crap about that album. It was very divisive amongst the fans based on the sound of it. Um, so I think that they, I mean, when you're around for 50 years and in 50 years, music changes, you know, you have your disco, you have, you have your, you know, in the eighties, you had your hair metal, you know, your Bon Jovi's and thing. And then you go into the grunge, a band for longevity. I think they try to fit into that niche at some of those points. You know what I mean? Like when you go through and you see like, there's the disco song because it was a disco time. And then you fit in with the, um, you know, with that, with like your asylum and your crazy nights, more of that pop, more of that. And also um, asylum with have, or animalized with heavens on fire. Now you have the visual piece coming in with MTV. It, I mean, it's hard not to try to conform to those, you know, to those, um, to those waves, to those trends. Oh yeah. I mean, Kiss, Kiss, argue, is all, Kiss, though, Kiss has always been one to jump on trends. Right. right. But you could also argue though, look at ACDC and Metallica and, and some of those other bands that stayed true to what they did. Now, granted there's people who don't like certain Metallica records, like St. Anger, whichever ones that some people have. Lulu. Huh? Lulu. The Metallica know. album, Lulu? Oh, my God. I don't God. know about it. I don't know. I'm not a Metallica fan. But my point is, is for the most part, they may have changed because they're trying to do something different. But they haven't never, I, at least I never felt like they they shifted direction. But well, then again, I could be wrong. I'm not a Metallica person. So if you look at if, I mean, I'm not a Metallica fan either. However, if you look at like a, a, uh, Master of Puppets, Master of Puppets, I thought was really raw. And then you look at Injustice for All, and I think it's so polished. I, I think, I mean, it's the same, but it's. Yeah, it's, I, 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 get, I get what you're saying there, but it, it wasn't like Metallica went from Metallica had, to, to, to Bon Jovi. They had right. a disco song. You know, they, yeah, they didn't do a disco song. They didn't try and do uh, you give love a bad name so they could jump on the hair bandwagon, you know, and, and, and I think and again, hind, hindsight is 2020 here. But, you know, did any band out of the 80s that tried to ride the grunge wave by becoming somewhat grungy, whether it was putting on combat boots and flannels or or making your songs less polished, did any band, Warrant, Slaughter, Def Leppard, anybody, Kiss, well, succeed? Think, succeed by it, really making it be, and changing? I don't think so. I think no. they got a little poppy. Like, like, um, in, uh, like in Metallica 1. That was a very, like, visual song. And, yeah. You know, and it was very thought out and visual and the whole video for it. Um, ACDC in the 80s, they did um, like Heat Seeker, which I thought was very poppy. So I think that they, these like heavy, heavy bands turned a tad bit poppy. But yeah, but they didn't go from Kiss Alive to Unmasked. True. Yeah, you're right. True. You know, they, so they, yeah, they, they, every they, band's going to change. Because like, look at Cheap Trick. When they put the doctor out, that was. Yeah you know keyboardian and, and but it still was cheap trick but we could argue that all day long and everyone's yeah. going to have a, a different view of, of all of that but you know i, I don't know it, the, the whole trend chasing piece was always an issue for me i think that was maybe that was one if you want to call it a failure maybe that was their kiss's biggest failure it was tracing, falling chasing into trends. the trend trap falling it, into it, the trend yeah trap. It, it 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 could be i mean you know the the Making that argument would then mean, well, we wouldn't have Dynasty, and a lot of people love right. Dynasty. We wouldn't have Crazy Nights, and I think Crazy Nights is, you know, almost a perfect Kiss album. Michael. But, but here again, I keep going back to at least on Crazy Nights and Dynasty, even though they may not be traditional heavy Kiss, they still had the Kiss vibe to them. They had what Kiss was about. Kiss was a good time party. Yeah enjoy your life, screw yes. the man type of band. And, and 
that's what got me when it came to Carnival of Souls is like after decades of growing up and listening to Kiss, I can't imagine these guys in Kiss being sad and depressed. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I just I can't see them as a sad and depressed and I'm angry at the world band. Yep. How can you That's... be angry at the world? You live in Beverly Hills and you're worth a hundred million dollars. You are not angry at the world. This is not real. Yeah. It was a dark album. I yes. It, it yes. was a dark album, but it was a dark album that wasn't legit. Meaning I would believe the bands coming out of Seattle when the grunge era exploded were truly in a different state of mind. They were, they were, they were trying to survive. They were trying to break through. They were trying, you know, that, that was their life. They were mad. They were, they were mad at the record labels and the bands of the eighties who were just out there having a good time when they were up in Seattle struggling to survive. Yeah, how so really, can, grunge how is can, like the start of Antifa. Yeah, it's Antifa to in, in music. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let let's be honest. How could Warrant, Slaughter, Def Leppard, Kiss, any band that tried to jump into the grunge grunge pool after all the success they had, how could anybody legitimately go, oh yeah, you guys are really sore and you know miserable and right you know, downtrodden. Yeah. You know, you only sold 4 million albums three years ago. Sucks. You toured the world, sold out shows, you know, and now, and now we're supposed to believe you're a miserable, depressed band. Right. That's what I couldn't wrap my head around. I agree. Fair enough. Lisa, um, any, any failures you want to bring up? Well, I mentioned the the grunge piece of it, or the uh, not the grunge thing, the um, falling chasing into trends. Do what? Chasing trends. Yes, chasing trends. Yeah. Um, and I think they and um, as much as and you talked about the movie, as much as Kiss tried to get into the you know film industry, I don't even I I personally liked um, um, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. But also Detroit Rock City. I liked it, but I don't know if it, 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 I think it's become a cult classic, like Phantom of the Park. So I don't know if they, if they ever found their way in terms of breaking into the film industry. So I was, yeah. And I mean, again, I think that they tried again after, after Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. But again, I, I don't know if that's maybe the avenue that they need to kind of go down. Is that it's inter- it's interesting that Kiss Meets the Phantom and Detroit Rock City both started out as serious movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And both ended up finding their spot in history as cult classics. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Intentions were good. Intentions were good. They Failed at what the intention was, but they fell ass backwards into success as they became cult classics that live on now because of that. And again, I watch it. I, I think I think they're great. But when you if you take a step back and figure out what they were trying to do, it did. I don't think it panned out the way that they expected. Yeah, I mean, I I I agree. I I would I would go out and say that the movie Detroit Rock City was a kiss failure and and not because it literally failed at the box office but just because it didn't live up to what it was supposed to be as a movie it was supposed to be a real coming of age movie that everybody was going to enjoy and i think what they learned was yeah most people don't enjoy and live in the world of kiss they they'll they'll go to a Kiss concert every year or two, but they don't live in the world of Kiss. And I think it proved just how small the Kiss Army diehard fan base really is. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, I me, mean, and I mean, what I think that they tried to do with Detroit Rock City is almost kind of make it like a dazed and confused kind of a movie. 
which even now, Days and Confused is still a cult classic. Again, I'm not dissing the movie. I'm just saying. Like, no, I enjoy the movie. I love the movie. It's so much fun. Yeah, but for what they did, it was a it failed right. at what they were doing. And again, the the whole the whole premise that I was telling Tommy and the listeners when we started was, I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos on like the greatest cell phone failures, the greatest technology product failures in the last. 30 years, 20 years, whatever it might be, where, you know, somebody says, I got this great product idea. It makes complete sense. It's got blah, 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 blah. You know, hey, Microsoft Zune, you know, that's a failure. Did it destroy Microsoft as a company? Not at all. But the Zune player didn't live up to anything. You know, the Windows phone, the, the Amazon phone, which was pulled and killed weeks after it was first announced. You know, you look back at all those things and you go, wow, I remember all the hype about this. It was going to be the greatest new thing. And then a month later, it's crickets. And it didn't all, live up to it. Without those failures, there can't be successes. No, exactly. I'm Well, you know? if unless you, you got to be smart enough to look at the failure, not be afraid of the failure and go, okay, what didn't work? And what was the, was it just timing? You know, pe- people also are like, Hey, you know, Apple, Apple's Newton, the very first attempt at doing basically an iPad complete failure. Why was it a failure? Maybe because timing wasn't right. Basically it, it, it came out technology. The idea was there technology wasn't ready to deliver what you wanted to promise and society wasn't there going, I need that product yet. Right. Timing is everything. And, and if it's same thing with timing is everything goes exactly back to carnival souls. Timing is everything, you know? Well, I, I, I think carnival souls was, the music that came out of it. I mean, if they, if Carnival of Souls had, in my opinion, been much closer to revenge, I would have loved it. But That's it was, right. it was such a far departure from mm-hmm. what was just preceding it that it was just like, what the fuck is going yeah. on here? Because even it, it, was, it wasn't a gradual change. It was an overnight A to Z change. Well, even, even, um, even revenge was a little bit of a, like a, a not a culture shock, but what as you know what was what it came after was I mean it was still Kiss music, but it was a little bit of a like whoa you know um, yeah but but you're 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 right and but I think my feeling with revenge was the same feeling I had with Creatures of the Night. Oh my God, these guys proved. They're back. They can still write classic Kiss material that that pumps a fist in the air and makes you play air guitar and bang your head and sing along. And it had everything going for it. I think it, it just was, happened at the it happened at the wrong time. Just I, like Creatures of the Night happened at the wrong their time. Their rebirth album because it yeah. came off of it came off of Pot in the Shade where you had your Read My Body and you know all of that. But it was like a rebirth, you know. It was. It was. It was. The band is back. Gene was back. The band looked. The band looked like a band. They looked great. They sounded great. Everything about that was Kiss, and yep. and and it was a refreshing Kiss because as the '80s moved on, their albums were getting all over the place during the '80s because you know Paul was steering the ship alone. Yeah. Revenge, as we know, Gene's back. He's back in full. He's committed to the band. You can see why that's important to have in mm-hmm. KISS. Yeah. Um Kiss My Ass, I thought was a massive failure. Wow. Yeah. What a pile of shit. You Listen know? to it once and done. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, but it was really frustrating because no, it was something I, I was actually really looking forward to. And it's just like, why couldn't they have done it like the way they did Art of McCartney? 
You know, no, you got all these second rate bands that no one gives a shit about. Um, but I think I think the problem there is, as we've talked about, the first rate artists don't want to do it. Kiss. What the right. fuck do I does Madonna really want to do a cover of Kiss? Please, I, not Madonna. I get it. I, I get it but there yeah. had to be other rock bands that were better than what ended up like the Gin Blossoms. Really? I think I think Bob's album, Spin the Box. <laughs> Whatever it was called, I think that one was a better one. Yeah, I just thought it was an epic failure. That's all. No, I I, I agree. I was going to throw that out there. Kiss and my then the ass. whole thing with the Fail. you can't use Ace's makeup on the cover. It, it's just like you know, you yeah. could get another one you could get rid of, and no one would know. Yeah, no, you're right. You could you could remove that album from the Kiss catalog, and nothing changes. I forgot mm-hmm. all about that. That's obviously how much. And 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 frankly, here, just so we all know, "Kiss My Ass" finally got added to like Spotify and Apple Music in the last week or so. Really, it hadn't been there for years. Wow. Okay. That's how much. That's how much we missed it. We didn't even know it was gone. That's my point. Completely forgot about it. Yeah. It, again, it's one of those things where remove that item from Kiss's history, and does it change anything? Not in the slightest. Carnival Souls wouldn't change anything. Kiss My Ass wouldn't change anything. Those so, were just fillers. Now, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask, because I was also thinking of Kiss My Ass, the video. Which, which of the, of the um, I don't know, videographies, I don't know what, how you call them, I guess. Um, you know, the, I guess it is. A the, home, the home videos. Which one of those do you think? was their biggest failure see good question the crazy nights home video well that was just a bunch of songs in a video yeah but (laughs) i mean i i I, I don't i don't have i don't have issues with you know um any of the home videos they did make because they were refreshing products to a uh a Kiss Army that was starved for history, and Kiss finally released it. Um, How excited were you when Exposed came out? I loved it. I thought I loved that it was better. I mean, Animal Eyes was just to me was just like a concert, but I loved. I mean, I loved seeing Bruce up there and Eric. I thought that was a really good one. But to see Exposed and to like see them, like talking and telling stories oh no i mean that that was seeing classic old videos and sharing yeah. showing old memorabilia I, I i couldn't complain about any of it now yeah you know looking back at it now yeah the writing and the dialogue is very oh, hokey hokey 80s dialogue i don't i don't care i mean animal eyes live uncensored was what to me was my my proof to all of my other friends that Kiss is legitimate, Kiss is real. They had an MTV concert. They kicked fucking ass. That was a great live concert. Everything, the, the and again, I only throw out the Crazy Nights home video because, to your point, it it literally was just what three or four music videos put on yeah. a cassette video cassette and release. Pull but- that out of their pull that out of their history, and does anybody miss it? Not in the slightest. But at the time, at the time when there was no YouTube. Yes, you, know, you got a point. That was the only way you could watch those videos on demand. And some of them, I mean, so if you, I mean, not that reason to live, my God, all you do is turn on MTV. I, I, I'm not a big fan of that song nor that video. I'm, I think, I think for the purpose, because it was overplayed all the time. I mean, it was like, oh my God, reason to live again. Not saying it's a bad song. I'm just saying the overplay of it. But, you know, for you to have a video of those three songs and a little compilation, that's like fantastic back in the day. You know, now you can just Google it. Um, I will, here, here's, here's, a, here's a failure I'll throw out 3D. Oh, uh, oh, 3D too. as the 3D as used on the Psycho Circus tour, 3D yeah. as used on the Psycho Circus music video. You're right. What the fuck? That was a, that's 3D. A, that's a good one. 
that's good. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. The the the, the music the music video is probably one of, if not the worst music videos Kiss has ever done, because it was all filmed to take advantage of stupid 3D glasses. Ooh. All you needed was melted, you know. It's just like. But like the movies, you'd get like, you don't remember, do you the, remember that? Yeah, you'd go get those red and blue glasses at 7-Eleven to go watch some stupid movie at the theater because it was in 3D. Yeah, but you also had, um, like when you got the glasses, they had, it was smell-o-vision and they gave you like yeah. a gift card. That's the stupidest ass thing I've ever heard. But anyway. Yeah, I, you know, but but yeah, let's, let's see. I'm going to a live concert, which in itself is already in 3D because- well, yeah, they're right it's there. live. I'm there. So now you're going to make me put and you're and you're going to stop the show and have something go put on your glasses. And now what? Now now Paul's going to sit there and take his guitar and go like this and you're going to go, "Ooh, scary." Yeah, you watch, watch the stupid like video screen, you know. The the let's put it this way, the whole psycho circus concept in concert was a complete failure well and that's the only show i missed the only concert i missed in pittsburgh for reasons i don't even want to get into but maybe that's probably better off that i missed it. i mean <laughs> I, I i love the set i love the sh that that part of it but the remember they talked about how oh we're gonna have roving performers in the audience doing fire breathing and stilt walkers and there's gonna be all these circus performers in the arena and okay, first night at Dodger Stadium, they did have somebody in the infield doing circus stunts. That ended there. It never went on the road after that. The stage didn't look like a circus. No. The staging didn't look like a circus, and the 3D effect was terrible. And I've I've always said it when when Motley Crue came out with the Carnival of Sins tour, that is what kiss should have done for psycho circus where motley Crue's entire stage was inside a giant circus tent in yeah. the arena and it had trapeze artists up there and you know it, it 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 had a circus theme to it kiss didn't do that i mean even even the wasp tour that just ended was more of a psycho circus That's theme true. than yeah. kiss's psycho circus was yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I, and again, it seems like a lot of the failures are somewhat tour related. I mean, I think it was just before you got here. I'm like, as much as Kiss gets praised for, you know, all this pyro and great stage shows, there's a lot of missing the boat and failures and kind of mine was lame. And for us Kiss fans, the oh. average person who doesn't live and breathe this, Every day of the week, it was great. But I, I'm I'm sitting here going, yeah, also, you know. Also, when you do this for 50 years, there's going to be some, you know, mishaps and failures and. Oh, of course. The, the moments. You're you gonna, know? you're you're you're, you're going to you're going to miss the boat here and there, but I feel oh, yeah. like they 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 did more than their share of that, and <laughs> and missed and, it a little too much. <laughs> yeah, you know because. I don't know, not trying, not caring, wanting to cut costs. I mean, and all of those are, you know, cutting costs, that's a legitimate reason. But, yeah. you know, it just, it it feels like there's been too many things where the stage, you know, KISS concerts for the most part are just a big stage, a lot of pyro and four guys on stage. Okay, that that that's exciting. End of the road tour is exciting, but your kiss, you're a visual over the top band. Couldn't you create more? Couldn't you do more? I don't yeah. know. I, you know the same the same gags. Oh, hey, Paul's flying out to the audience. First time that was pretty fucking cool. Twenty years later. No, you're right. No, okay. you're right. Yep. Here we go. Paul's doing it again. Here we go. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but, you know, lo lo so lo lo love them or hate them, Motley Crue seem to always up themselves from tour to tour. 
they didn't this time, this past time. Yeah. You know, they didn't. There's no pyro. There's no nothing. And I'm just like, what the hell? But yeah. in, in all fairness to Kiss, there's a hell of a lot of people that are showing up at these shows that have never seen them before. True. Again, this this is coming yeah, from we're nitpicking because we're we're fans. coming from nitpicky diehards who've been there for 50 years. We, you know, and and we're not the ones filling up the arenas. It's the average. It's the average. Hey, it's Kiss. Let's go have a let's go see a lot of pyro and lights and explosions. Cool. Okay. And that's exactly what it is. That's, we're that's get our what it is. On. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could sit here and I could. I'll watch a video about how the Amazon Fire cell phone was a complete failure. But yet, I'm an Apple person. I would have never bought it to begin with. I mean, it, the failure didn't mean squat to me. And I still use other Amazon products. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're really being nitpicky here. But that's what you get from a show of diehard Kiss fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Any other failures you guys want to bring up? Products, videos, band members, songs. I mean, no, the, those are those are the main ones for me more than anything else, you know. I mean, if I mean, we went down a product, we would go down a huge rabbit hole at that point. Right, because then we could start in on the whole Dubai debauchery. And yeah, could, that's a whole show in itself. Yeah, and then we could start talking about you know how it they didn't finish filling orders for the kiss army i mean it, it's endless with those types of things and and to me those aren't i don't want to say not significant because i know people have, have shelled out cash for the dubai thing but just individual products and things over the years for me isn't as, as big of a deal as some of the other focus things we focused on today any tours that didn't live up to the hype We pretty much covered them, I think, didn't we? You know, that's another homework question. What did we miss, guys? What didn't we talk about today that we should have brought up, in your opinion? Yeah, that's a good question. What 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 other failures did could you think of that we did not talk about? Mm -hmm. Right. And this isn't bag on kiss day. We just thought it'd be interesting to talk about, you know, some of the missteps over the years. I'm sure some people are mad because we talk poorly. Oh, before you got here, I, I, I brought up a failure of uh, putting Eric and Vinny in their own characters and costumes as a failure. Yeah, that's going to start. That's going to start a shit storm. Oh, boy. You love to stir that shit pot, don't you, Michael? Well, as it's I said, it, 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 it has nothing to do with liking or not liking them or their contributions or their skills. It's just I don't think it did anything to really help and and save Kiss's career by putting those guys in their own makeup. I agree. It it yeah and you know, at, I'll for you Lisa it's like you know Vinny was mm. not on any album cover in makeup, and he was only on one tour in makeup and a tour that few people saw, including most Kiss fans. I think the intention was good. Yes, I, the the I, intention I think- was good. The it, it just didn't work out. It didn't work out in starting was, Kiss's career. Yeah. yeah. Intention was good. Execution, failure. Yeah. Well, the execution, they executed it fine. The end result was nobody cared. End result, yeah. You you created a you created a great looking product. Nobody bought it. But you know, it. Lived, nobody I, bought it. It did nothing, it did nothing to save Kiss's career. When you compare it to what happened when you had these two guys take their makeup off, mm-hmm. and then what happened to Kiss? Oh my God, it was a whole different, whole different world for Kiss once yeah. the makeup was completely gone. But I also try to live my life with the seventy thirty. That if seventy five, if seventy percent of the time I make the right decision, I can live with the thirty percent that I don't. And you can always correct course and change as you go. So, I mean, we're all, none of us are immune to these types of failures. And I think it's, a, it's fun to talk about because it's always the what if. What if they didn't do the solo albums? They would have done a double album. What if they didn't record The Elder and they did a rock album, to your point? What if? That's the fun part of the whole thing rather than just dragging it through the mud. But 
like I said, I think it was a very valid point you made about what if they wouldn't have done new characters. And in, even in our own lives, we make, you know, if we, you know, some failure decisions, you know, yeah. so it's, it's not like we're picking on kiss or whoever. I mean, maybe no, but, there's still going to be, well, I mean, I mean, e e even as Gene loves to say, you know, the best, the best baseball players get up to the plate and only hit, you know, three out of 10 pitches. Yep, that's true. I mean, that's you know, a so, very fair point to make. So in the yeah, scheme I mean, of things, after 50 years, they've got a damn good record. Well, well no, I was just going to say that. The fact that they are here 50 years later, as big, if not bigger, than they've ever been in their career, says to me they've made more right decisions than they've made wrong decisions. Well, exactly. And, exactly. Yep. Well, okay. and even, too, you can go as far as to say that some of those decisions that were made were beyond their control because ace leaves. Okay. Now what do we do? You're forced into making a decision that you maybe weren't prepared to make. It's going to be a 50, 50 at best, you know, especially because he was so such a loved member of the band. It was a really hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, you know, him yep. leaving, but that was his choice. So we got to keep moving. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, we can second guess everything, and KISS fans love to do that, like we're experts. Right. But it's not our band. It's not our business. And they're still here. And whether you agree or not, they're still very successful. Very yep. much so. With everything that's going on in the last 50 years, they're still incredibly successful more successful than the vast majority of bands will ever, ever be. So mm -hmm. they, and, and someone might say, oh yeah, it's just all luck. No, you don't get lucky 50 years in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's luck every once in a while when you made the right decision at the right time or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of experience behind these guys whether you like them or not there's a lot of experience they know what they're doing and they have survived when many others okay. failed, failed years ago mm -hmm. yeah it's true so some of those other bands did not learn by their failures they you know? either don't learn by their failures or they just aren't good enough to have time on their side yep. to ride out the failure and write themselves. I mean, you know, if the elder had happened in 1975 versus when it did, it's quite possible kiss would have never survived right. so early in the career that that might've torpedoed the band. But the fact that it happened basically 10 years into the band's career after being huge superstars, as big of a fuck up as the elder was, they were able to ride it out. They had time on their side to to ride it out and and make good on it. Yeah, it's true. Yep. And rebound. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. You, you you see a lot to me what i see a lot of when kiss was jumping on trends it wasn't so much in my mind of them wanting to completely change to be that trend it was them figuring out how do we buy time how do we keep ourselves alive for the next 12 to 24 cycle. months buying time while things continue to change and well, and, and that's a great point that you just made, because maybe that's also a piece of the decision making process that we've never discussed before that does add up to the choices that they made. Oh, I, I, I listen, you know, I firmly believe that the KISS convention tour, we all love it. It was a great time. That was buying time. That was them like, what can we do for the next 12 months? Because we can't go out and tour. We're not going to play arenas. Nobody's going to book us for arenas. We can't afford this. What can we do? Mm -hmm. Hey, let's, let's, let's 
borrow this KISS convention idea and let's create our own. And boom, successful. And yeah, yeah, you know, was Carnival of Souls an attempt to buy time while the reunion was being put together? Or was it an attempt to buy time in hoping that the music industry was going to cycle back to something else? You know, Dynasty could be looked at the same way. Crazy Nights could be looked at the same way. We, you know, they do all these things to how to stay, how to stay an active business when, listen, we just came through a pandemic. Every business had to do this for two and a half, three years, or -hmm. you go out of business. How do we take our, how do we take our business and pivot so we can just survive for the next 12 to 24 months until things change again. And then we can come back out. Yeah. You got to be able to do that in any single business. Yeah. There were some people uh, when the market crashed in 2009 that went into being foreclosing foreclosure listing agents and they never recovered from it because they were forever known as the foreclosure people then from that point forward. So yeah, your, your, your choices have consequences. And luckily they were able to, like you said, survive and move on and, and regenerate. Yeah, they survived. They adapt, they adapted and they survived and they moved on. So really they Some, were some great contestants on Survivor. I'll play out last overcome. There you go. Yeah. I think Gene, Gene would probably rather sit back and tell people what to do on Survivor than do it himself. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I think you uh, should go out and uh, fish. I think, I think you should go out and catch some fish. Bring it's it back. I'll, I'll eat it. Yeah, but only if you prepare it the right way, because I'm Gene yeah. Simmons. Love kids. But Yeah, I mean, I think to kids some extent... Hard. That that's 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 one of Kiss's strength is the ability to adapt. Yeah. When things are when when you know things in the music business, which always change from year to year, when they change on you and you're not part of that change, you've got to figure out a way to adapt, or you die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kudos to anybody that's made it that long. Yeah, who it is, you know. Yeah, I mean, we we you can joke all you want that Firehouse and Warrant are still touring out there. It's like, yeah, but they're still touring. Oh, I was at Firehouse Saturday night, and there was a ton of people there, and there were some hardcore Firehouse fans, really into it. And I was you, one of the most underrated uh, Firehouse albums is O2. Did you ever hear that one? Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. I think it's a great album. I oh, love Firehouse. I love Firehouse. Yeah. Their de- their debut album, I think, is spectacular as a, as a as a hard rock album. It just came out a little too close too to the grunge era that it didn't didn't get its dues. But again, any of these bands that could figure out how to adapt and survive and not end up asking, "Do you want fries with that?" deserve all the respect in the world i agree and they like i said they they had a ton of people there it was them and bullet boys my only issue with firehouse is god for the last five years or so i can't get away from them they're everywhere See, you we know? don't have that down here you guys are lucky up there yeah yeah you're lucky because they they never come out to california they're here yep. every <laughs> single year and i've seen them at festivals they're always playing which isn't a bad thing they're a working band which is awesome i just would like to see tom Kiefer that much or cheap trick, you know, but I digress. One other thing I'd like to mention before we go is I was talking to Bruce a week or so ago, and he's having some problems with his social media. There are a lot of fake accounts popping up. Yeah. So if you are a follower or you want to be a follower of Bruce or Bruce and Lisa, his lovely wife, make sure that it has the little blue check next to his name uh, so that you guys don't end up following someone that's just nothing more than a fake account because we don't want to see anyone get taken advantage of. So I think it's a fair point also to make sure that you are aware of any artist or celebrity or actor or whatever that you follow 
do your due diligence and make sure you're actually following the real person. Let, let, let's be clear here, people. You are never, and this isn't just KISS members, this is any band members, this is any movie stars, this is anybody. You're never going to get a private message from a celebrity saying, hey, this is my private account just for you, my best fans. Right. Why don't you let me know where you live yeah, and that's come cool. follow? Yeah. Sorry, that's a hundred percent fake, not legit. It's a scam. Report it right mm-hmm. away. None of these people are jumping on private messenger and sending and, and engaging and starting a conversation. Mm-hmm. Hi, hi, Lisa Martini. This is Bruce Kulick. I hear you're one of my biggest fans. Could we chat? No, yeah. I'm sorry. That's not that it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Never happens that way. Didn't we hear from a guy who thought he was buying a bunch of stuff from Paul Stanley and Doc? And he was convinced he was talking with Paul Stanley buying things from him. And like we're like, no, man, it, that's not they don't they wouldn't do that. You yeah. know, you can go to you know Kiss Live auctions and they've had autograph sessions and done things like that. In fact, it'll be over by the time you see this, but tonight Bruce is doing, um, Bruce and Lisa Lisa. Yeah. are doing a, uh, an auction on kiss live auctions, which is on, it's a Facebook group. It's a private group. You can, you can, um, join if you want. And they have auctions going every single day and they sell merchandise. So if you're it's looking fun. for, even if you don't buy anything, it's fun. Yeah, you can just hang out and be a part of the conversation. There's a lot of people who um, are regulars on that site that they buy things maybe once in a great while, but they're there just because they love to be a part of all of it. It's a great, yeah. wonderful community. We should have Peter Corey on sometime to talk to him. Oh, but just, you know, I wanted to make sure if you weren't aware of that, that be careful whether it be Bruce or Paul or Gene or whomever, that you're following the right person. That's actually who you think you're following. Yeah, you're never going to get a private message out of the blue. Yeah. from these people no and they're never going to ask you for your phone number they're never going to ask you for your email address they're never going to ask you for money right so if somebody does it is not real and i don't care how much they try and tell you they're real they're not real there's always going to be a buffer so like when paul signed all of those records kenny begley who is one of the um people on that site we were talking about he has auctions and they auctioned off uh, a lot of memorabilia that paul had signed and keith larue was involved in it so you know it was legit and it came directly from paul but paul wasn't on there writing emails to everybody any more than bruce does bruce will answer questions through peter or there's always an intermediary yeah there's always a moderator always yep there you go. All right. So I, I think uh, I think the obvious homework this week is what do you think of our list of kiss fails and what are some fails that you think we missed? And there's no right or wrong answers to this stuff. So let us right. know what what you think uh, some some of the bigger kiss fails are over the years. Yeah, we're curious to hear what you have to say. You know, and I, I just think that, um, you know, there's so many things that we missed that we didn't even think about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could get in again. We could get into products, get into music videos. We could get into songs. You know, you know, is there one song off one album where you're like, what a, you know, that that was a failure song to include that or that was a failure to make that the lead single. Yeah. And we want to make sure that that you guys stay safe and you don't lose money. We don't want you to get Radley. Radley. <laughs> That's good. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. That's it for three sides of the coin. Uh, next week, as I reminded everybody, no guest. I won't be here, so that should make you happy. I will be in Disneyland. Look at that. Oh, yeah. The room? yeah. Do you, would you like to contribute to my GoFundMe campaign so I can take a kid to Disneyland? Oh, are you going to, are you going to you're going to Anaheim, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. It is spent expensive as 
hell, I was telling Tommy about this before we hit the record button. The money we spent before even getting into the park is just incredible. Uh-huh. And, and I haven't even I haven't even spent ten dollars on an ice cream cone yet. Maybe you should just go to Six Flags and hire someone to show up in a Mickey Mouse outfit and tell Thule you're there. I don't know. And you know, and she's like, I can't wait to buy my stuffies and souvenirs. I'm like, oh, I'm like, my- oh God, I don't want to buy all this shit. Nope. Oh, when you see her little face and how excited she is. That's her. Oh, I know, I know, I know. That's why that's why we're doing this. It's just like, oh my God. I, I, I told Katrina, I'm like, the second we step foot on Main Street, she's gonna be like, I wanna buy that, I wanna buy that, I wanna buy that. And I'm gonna be like, we haven't even been here two minutes and you've yep. spent five hundred dollars. We're not get- buying anything until the last day. You got to get the ears. You got to get the balloon that has a light in it that costs you $25. And then hopefully she doesn't let it go. Go. This is I, not that I'm speaking out of experience or anything like that. Then yeah, you gotta right. Got to get the balloon that they like. Oh, look at the balloon. Then it flies away. You know, then you get the ice cream, the Mickey shaped ice cream that they take two licks out of and it falls on the ground. You wait. Oh you wait. Then you get the I'm, bib- I'm, oh. I'm not looking forward to the money it's going to cost once we're in the park. The money we've spent to buy tickets to the park and the hotel, please. They should give me everything else for free. <laughs> well, you're probably going to have to take an Ativan before you go that day. <laughs> no. They, do they serve alcohol at your Disney World? They don't serve it at all. I think of Disneyland, Disney World, they don't. I don't. I don't know. They'll be out. I can guarantee you this: there'll be alcohol back at the hotel. You're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> our Disney. There'll be alcohol and edibles back at the hotel. <laughs> we don't, our Disney World days, we don't, I mean, Lily and James are, I could miss it though. I'm not going to lie. Like Brian and I were talking, I'm like, I wish we still enjoyed it because it is a magical place. I know it sounds corny, but when you walk in and you see your kid's eyes light up, it's, it's pretty magical. Now we go to Universal where they have bars, pop-up bars as you walk. Oh, nice. You're yeah. like, you're like, yeah, go on the roller coaster. We'll meet you back here at the bar. Oh, yeah. When I went to Universal in October, Brian's like, Lisa, how many times did you go to these bars? I'm like, I drank my way through Universal. <laughs> He's like, $9 at this bar. Then like 20 minutes later, $9 at this bar. <laughs> He's like, did you just... You like your cooler's lights. I'm like, damn right I did. Damn right. I yeah. Don't know. It was fun. I had a great time. Yeah, it'll 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 be fun. I know it'll be fun. I'm just not looking forward to the sticker shock of of a Disneyland vacation. So you had a pocket to fly? You don't have to fly, do you? Don't you drive down there? We're driving. I'm renting oh. a car to drive down. It's okay. it's it's a seven hour drive. Well, that's not that bad. But I'd rather do that than fly across the country, go to Disney World, then rent a car while we're there. No, no. I'm like, let's. I told Katrina, I'm like, let's ease into this Disney stuff. Let's just go down to Disneyland first. It's a good start. Let's get our toes wet a little. Let's not go. Yeah, exa- exactly. I mean, we're going to be in, we'll be in Disneyland and California Adventure for three days. That's it. Three days. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and we drive on a Monday and we drive on a Friday. And it's like, okay, I can, I can live with that. Awesome. Look at <laughs> Lisa's like, I want another baby. <laughs> no. no, no. I'll live vicariously for you and I'll just enjoy stuff. And there you go. Yeah. Although I gotta tell you, I did get I get a smile on my face when I'm like, Tuli, what's what what is the one ride you want to go on at Disneyland? What's the one thing you want to say? And she's like, I really want to ride. It's a small world. And I was like, oh. oh. She's like, because they show people of all different shapes and sizes and colors. And I'm like, oh, you're a good kid. You're playing oh. that Disney, you're playing that Disney card up well, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, she's just like, let me just get me in the park, Dad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All all the while you don't know this, but there's a book at school. What to say to your parents. Yeah, what to say to your parents to get what you need at Disneyland. Yeah. 
She's not, 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 oh, no, not a, not a book. She's probably found a YouTube video made by a 10 year old <laughs> of like, here, here's what you tell your parents to get them to take you. I love it. You know what though? She's a smart girl. I wouldn't put it past her. Yeah. No, I know. I know. I had... It's a tail wagging the dog. <laughs> Dad, that small world was so beautiful. Can I buy a four foot Mickey Mouse stuffed animal for four hundred dollars? Like, okay. 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 Mm-hmm. We got and room then, in the back seat. And then she was then she'll say, because usually our excuse is, well, we can't take it home on the plane. I know. We're in yeah. a car. Can't say yeah, that. Stuck. The back seat has got room for a giant stuffed animal. Yeah, you're you're fucked. Sorry. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> you have got- to get a second job just to pay for this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh God! No, I know. I know. It'll be fun. All it's right, everybody. It's still going to be less money than Mark spends on crab while he's on vacation. So really. I know. Yeah. Yep. So, so I won't be here next week. I'll be in Disneyland. So these knuckleheads are going to deliver a show that I have no idea what it'll be like. Mm-hmm. But Mark will be back next week. So it's really going to suck. So he didn't join today. No. no. Yeah. He his his excuse was we have dinner reservations. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Okay. I guess he's more romantic. Yeah. 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 Lisa's like, yeah. Okay. I I believe no, that. That's code for like the Greek bathhouse or something. <laughs> you know, buy it. All right. Just FYI, right. just FYI, Disney ears at Disneyland are forty dollars a pair. Holy shit! How much is the big? How much is the big stuffed animals? Probably four hundred dollars. Big. Giant. By the way, hold 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 on while you're while you're looking. Let me find something here. Okay. Uh. Shop Look at Lisa. Nice. This is from this is from Disney World 1972, 71, when it first opened, the first year of Disney World. Yeah, that was 71. I these are my these, these, these are these are my Mickey Mouse ears. Are you gonna wear those? When you I think you Michael, you need to wear those when you go to Disneyland. Let's see if they even on. fit. Hold on. All right. So on the Disney shop, on Disney. Oh, wait. <laughs> nice. <laughs> is, is that is that funny? There. Perfect. You have too much head for the look. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I go into Disneyland like this. They're gonna pull me off to the side. They're gonna be uh, like, yeah. Oh, no. They'll yeah. be like pedophile. And do do yeah. you have do you have a like a gum band thing that goes around for your chin? No. Okay, then you might. Uh, oh God, yeah. Right. So so large <laughs> Disney. Uh, uh, oh. So the big Disney Mickey Mouse on the Disney Shop Disney dot com. It's twenty one inches, like the little kids holding it. Forty-four ninety-nine, which in Disneyland prices is going to cost you about one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. that's still cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Disney, the Disney, the Disneyland cost of living increase. Hey, that's what. I, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So if you go to, yeah, yeah, you, you're, yeah, it's, it's not going to work. Oh. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. The Disneyland mm-hmm. has it's. It's Walt Disney World 50th anniversary. It, yeah. Do you have any gold in your teeth you can sell? I know. <laughs> sell your. Well, I, I do think, I think there's an entrance where you can donate a kidney as you walk in. I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, you might want to do that. But like, I think donating <laughs> one kidney just gets you well, like one Dole Whip treat and that's it. <laughs> that's yeah, you, you got you to gotta give up a little bit. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> so well, wait a minute, sir. If you want to ride the rides, we're going to need a lung. Yeah, yeah we're going to need a lung and a kidney. And a piece of... Now, if you want to get rid of an eyeball, we'll really set you up. 
Do you have a 401k you can sign over upon entrance? Yeah. That's a fast pass. You give an I, you get on the ride. Just one Yeah, exactly. Ride. Just one ride. Well, it'll be something she'll never forget. And you guys are going to go crazy oh. when you see her there. So oh, I know. There'll be it's, plenty it's of pictures. It's all going to be good. And, oh, and, then, and, then, and then 30 days later, the visa bill arrives. And we're like, fuck this. So mm -hmm. it says here it's the 100th anniversary. I don't think that's right. We're going to be eating ramen. 100th anniversary of Disneyland. No. That can't be right. It says 100 no. years of wonder. 100 years of Disney wonder, but not Disneyland. Didn't Disneyland open in the 1950s or 60s? Let me see. Yeah, I, I thought it was late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. I thought that Disney, I mean, Disneyland opened in 71, which turned 50, my birthday year. But now, oh, wait, Michael, they're, oh, 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 they're selling Disney 100 merchandise. With, look at, they have little, uh, she, uh, Katrina, or uh, Tuli's going to want them. They are rhinestone ears because she likes her rhinestones mm -hmm. and glitter. Rhinestones ears with the little 100th, 100 symbol in the middle. That's going to set you back. How much? Mm -hmm. It doesn't say. So what we need oh. to do is what we need to do is we need to like start sending Thule some um, messages, you know, like snail mail with pictures and say, yep. hey, this looks good. Ask your mom and dad for this. Oh, $195. Oh, 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 the God. rhinestone ears. Yep. Yeah, that ain't happening. Here it is. I'll Did buy some plain ears, some Elmer's glue and some glue on studs you'll bedazzle her ears for I'll her. bedazzle it for you while you're asleep <laughs> oh they're really cool oh these ones have stuff that floats around look, oh. look at Lisa she Lisa's going I'll tell you what they're really cool oh my god she looks so cute in these oh, <laughs> oh my god Michael they're so cute she's gonna look oh my god you gotta get her ears would you like to no. Donate a pair of ears. Really? I'm just saying you need to get her some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been telling you the ears that she picks, they're going to have rhinestone. I'm telling you, I know exactly what she's going to pick out. I I'm know. telling you, I know I'm not spending $195 on rhinestone ears right now. <laughs> That's what it says. I will let her put them on. I'll take a picture of her wearing them and then we put them back on the shelf. Yeah. Here you go. Enjoy them now. All right, everybody. That's it. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. I'll see you in two weeks. They'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. It's a small world. And Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515. Voices for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by jessicamarsvoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.